Well, hello everybody, and welcome to G Bears Off Brood Ways, a homestead in the desert. And yeah, we're looking at the uh, batteries right now. I've got them at 13.7 here inside the, uh, the cabin. This is my inside controls, so I can uh, take care of stuff without having to go out in the cold. So anyway, it was... Uh, Never really made 60 degrees today, but it's been in the uh, upper 50s. And I still got a 14 mile an hour wind out there at 4.13 in the afternoon. No rain. Um, they said that we were going to get some. We didn't get any. So I did get some of my uh, startup uh, bins here put together. And the ones with the t tags in them, I've already planted seeds. The others are going to get seeds here pretty soon. And then a couple of larger pots here for a couple of tomato plants. And get those started and let them grow up. So anyway, let's move on outside. And while I'm doing that, instead of waiting until the end of this video, I'm going to do it right now. Uh, don't forget, everybody, that, that this year, I'm letting everybody who wants to hit that subscribe button down there absolutely free. Yep. I'm allowing you to get on to my channel, subscribe to my channel, absolutely free. No tricks, no um, spamming, no extra emails, nothing like that. All you do is click the subscribe button and the little bell icon if you want to get notified when I post a new video. And that's it. Totally free. So don't waste any more time. Get it while it's free. And uh, and don't forget, give me a thumbs up down there when you see my videos and like them. So we're coming out here to the battery room. And uh, we're going to look at a few things out here. I need to get in here and when the weather breaks a little bit and clean all the battery uh, terminals. And somebody gave me a great idea. I've used uh, the spray terminal stuff that you spray on there. Doesn't seem to help much. But uh, this individual said use that plastic dip um, rubberized stuff that you would get to dip your plier handles in and that stuff to coat the handles. Get some of that and a little paintbrush and clean the terminals off really well and then coat them with that rubberized stuff to keep it from spreading. So I'm going to give that a try and when I do I'll uh, of course video it so we can see how that goes. Let's see we got uh, not enough wind to do anything today but we're in the same zone. So let's see what we got here. Uh, 1353 volts max watts peak yeah, that's funny is that uh, this thing is, uh, the watt hours are great, 4,556 4, watt hours. But uh, it's not um, recording the um, amps peak and the watts peak and that stuff. There's amps peak and it says zero. And I know yesterday I was watching it take in 22 amps. So, that's, uh, that's pretty weird that it's not recording those. Well, that's what you get when you buy Chinese stuff, right? So anyway, as we can see here, at 13.8, 13.8, and Renegy Rover and my Midnight Classic, they're both agreeing with the... Uh, the, the amount of power that I've taken in. My uh, system here is on float because I really don't need any more input power with everything uh, totally maxed out. And I'm bringing in 105.4 volts or 105.6 volts. And uh, that's about right if I'm not mistaken. Um, that's my my big panels so anyway that's uh that's my system so 
2, 4, 6, 8, 16, 17, 18 of the US 2200 um, golf cart batteries. And those are deep cycle batteries, lead acid. And then 2, 4, 6 of the, uh, the larger solar type batteries made by Trojan. And uh, that's my total battery bank right now. Now originally I was supposed to get six more of uh, those US 2200s to go across the bottom here. And I'll be getting rid of that little um, two-stroke generator. I don't need it. So if anybody's interested in it, let me know. Uh, I'll clean it up and show you that it runs and all of that stuff. But uh, I really don't need a two-stroke generator because... I do have my big generator outside here and uh, I want to re mention I've had a couple of questions recently about uh, people hooking up their solar and wind power and having problems with the um, their hookups but uh, it's very important controllers those those are old controllers those are harbor freight controllers and then my other controllers are over here. All controllers. I don't care what they are. All controllers. Uh, MPPT controllers. Uh, PWM controllers. I don't care uh, what controller you have. And I don't care if it's for uh, solar or for wind power or for hydropower or any of that. You have to. It is a must to hook up your batteries to the controller first and then hook up your input second. Now that's, it doesn't matter if you're 12 volts, 24 volts, 48 volts, or 96 volts. It doesn't matter what you're, you're hooking up. All controllers. I don't care who makes the controller. I don't care what brand. I don't care if it came from China. I don't care if it came from Indonesia. All controllers must be hooked to the battery first. That tells the electronics in the controller what voltage to set itself for. Now, remember, um, a lot of controllers, like all the controllers I have in here, are all either 12 or 24 volt. They'll handle either 12 or 24 volt. I have a 12 volt system. Those are 12 or 24 volts, so I could switch to 24 volts but my inverter, my Ames inverter, is 12 volt only. So I would have to change my inverter to 24 volts. I'd have to buy a new inverter. Okay, I can't use this one to do 24 volts. So that's the, the basic secret of it all. Make sure you always hook your batteries up to your controllers first and always disconnect the battery from the controllers last. So if you do that, you shouldn't have any problems with um, getting your, your system up and running. Very simple. All right. So I do have my Harbor Freight Predator generator here. The, the 6,500 watts is not right. It's a 5,500 watt. And uh, this wire that's here... Um, could plug into the generator and then that comes up and ties into the Ames inverter here and that allows me to on, on days where there's just absolutely no input for any reason whatsoever coming in from solar or wind into my system then this uh, unit can be Come a battery charger so I can fire up the generator and then plug that in and that gives me the um, the option of using a generator to not only run everything in the cabin but also to charge my batteries at the same time now some of you might ask how come I don't just leave it plugged in so it's one less step when I have to well the reason for that is on these generators, it says just about everywhere, disconnect 
powered devices before generator shutoff. Okay, shutoff under load damages the generator. So if I plug that in, and I have had to start it up with the the power plugged into it, I could damage the generator. Then if I came out and I shut it off with that um, still plugged in, I could damage the generator. I don't want to do that. So there are generators that you can get that uh, you can keep um, hardwired connected together with your system and you can also get them so that they have an auto uh, electric starter with an auto connection going to the Ames inverter that will start your generator if there's a loss of power.